Please be aware that the comments, views, opinions shared on this podcast are not meant to diagnose a medical problem and or legal problem. If you do have a medical problem or legal problem, kindly contact a professional. Welcome to An Apple A Day, a podcast, a resource, a community. Share your experiences and learn from others as we overcome barriers and learn to live a happy, healthy life with a disability. Welcome to the community. Here's your host, Jimmy Apple. Welcome to another episode of An Apple A Day. I'm your host, Jimmy Apple. Hey, how you doing today, my friends? You feeling good? You feeling strong? You feeling better than you did yesterday? Excellent. Thanks a lot for stopping by today. I'm really happy you did because I got some good information I want to share with you. Some of it comes, first of all, from Medicare. You're going to be blown away by some of it. Some of it you probably already know, but we're going to share it here anyway. And another thing I want to talk to you about is this time of year, people start getting antsy about money. You know, the holidays and they want to start making money and they want to start finding money wherever they can find it. And people start toying with the idea of working and doing whatever. So I want to talk to you about that. But before we start, I want to remind you, An Apple a Day is brought to you by www.famousapple.com. Famousapple.com is the home site for this podcast. So you get a minute, go over there, check it out. We did some working on the website this past week. We got more work to do on it, but go over there, check it out. Let us know what you think. And if you want to get a hold of me, you can reach me by email at jimmy at famousapple.com. That's jimmy at famousapple.com. If you have a question for the administrators, you can, you can contact the administrators at admin at famousapple.com. That's A-D-M-I-N at famousapple.com. Hey, a while back we talked about keeping a journal. You know, about how you're feeling on certain days, uh, what the doctors are telling you, problems that you have that you want to remember to tell the doctor, reminders for your next appointments, your next doctor's appointments, medication changes, all that stuff. Well, we're getting towards the end of the year now. We're in October, and you should be starting to wrap up your notes from this year. You're not finished with them yet, not by a long shot. You still got a couple more months to go, but you should start wrapping the wrapping things up, going over everything, make sure that you have it all down. You haven't missed anything during the year. You have to get a book to start your new journal for 2020. 2020, can you imagine that? Make sure you're up to date with everything. Refresh yourself with everything that went on over the year. You should read through it and start preparing for 2020. It's a good thing to do. It reminds you of where you've been. And it helps us to prepare for the future, where we're going to, where we're heading to. Like I said, a journal is an invaluable tool in your healthcare because we can't remember everything. Plus, the medication that we're on sometimes makes us a little bit forgetful. Plus, just life in general, we can forget things that have happened, you know, early on. So, having a journal is very important. It's very proactive towards your healthcare. And it's a tool that you can work with your doctor or your therapist with. So if you're not really sure how to keep a journal, we will definitely go over journaling again next week. But think about it. Keep it in your mind for those who do do the journal. It's towards the end of the year, so start thinking about wrapping it up. Get a box, put your journals in a box, and start preparing your new journal for 2020. The future is here. (laughs) Oh boy, are you ready for it? Uh, I know I am. All right, I want to move on here. We're going to discuss a message from Medicare. If you recall, last week or the week before, we were talking about Medicare and the supplemental plans that you can have with Medicare. I said I just wasn't sure when the open enrollment started. Well, it just so happened this week I got a message from Medicare that open enrollment begins October 15th. That's just two weeks from now, or actually a week and a half from now. So you might want to go over to Medicare.gov, check out Medicare's plan finder to compare options. You can shop for plans and feel confident that you're making the choice that's right for you. Now, 
Their plant finder is mobile friendly. It works on your smartphone, it works on your tablets, and any other mobile device. So go over to Medicare.gov, that's M-E-D-I-C-A-R-E.gov, and check out their plan finder. And you'll see you can get these supplemental plans. And believe me when I tell you, the supplemental plans really do work. And you can either get ones that you have to pay a, a small monthly fee for, or they even have ones that are free. But you really have to dig into it and look at both plans. Sometimes the free ones may be better than the ones that you're paying for, and other times it's well worth to pay a little bit more to get the extra benefits. You have to weigh it for yourself, which one works out best for yourself. But check out that Medicare plan finder. And something else from Medicare. Don't forget to get your flu shots. That's right. It's that time of year, okay? The flu shot is free from any doctor or any other health professionals. Could be a nursing home, could be a pharmacy, whoever, that accepts Medicare. The flu shots are free. So don't put it off. And if you're afraid of needles, look the other way. It's worth getting. Get your flu shot. And just one other reminder, especially this time of year when people start putting up decorations, whether it's you putting up the decorations, maybe somebody else. This time of year, I usually end up getting cuts on my hands, whether it's from the cold weather or holding onto a banister that somebody's decorated. And if you're getting these cuts in your hands where you're bleeding and you haven't had a tetanus shot in the last five years, no matter how small the cut is, get a tetanus shot. Our systems are compromised enough that we don't have to add to it. And a tetanus shot is a one, two, three thing. So if you haven't had a tetanus shot in five years, you find yourself, you got a cut that you don't know where it came from, get the tetanus shot. The cold weather makes your skin brittle and it's real easy to get a cut. So if you do have a cut, get a tetanus shot. If you're afraid of a needle, look the other way. Put your head down, close your eyes, hold on to your spouse's hand, uh, sing a song in your head, whatever, but get this shot, okay? All right, let's move on to something else. All right, it's a given. Living on Social Security disability is tough. The money that we get from Social Security disability is not a king's fortune, but it's there to help you pay your bills. And you're never going to get rich, believe me living on social security disability. It's not meant for you to get rich on social security disability. What it's meant to do is help you to survive, basically. And I got got this email from Colleen in Florida, and she is pissed at me. She told me, well, in no uncertain terms, she told me I'm a liar because I said that you can't work and receive social security disability. Now, I want to correct her. Colleen, I never said you can't work and receive Social Security disability. What I said is you can earn extra money each month up to a certain amount. After that certain amount, it becomes gainful income or gainful employment. And it has to be reported to Social Security disability each month. And once you surpass that threshold, you're into that period, what they call the honeymoon period of returning to work. You're allowed to, re- you're allowed to receive Social Security disability benefits for a certain amount of time while you're returning to work and receiving your full pay. And you're also allowed to keep your Medicare benefits while returning to work. It, it's a, it's there as, it's there as a safety net to help you get back into the workforce. Social Security isn't trying to keep you disabled, as they said in this videotape that she sent to me. They're not trying to keep you disabled or dependent on them. Social Security disability helps you to get back into the workforce. They'll retrain you. Now, she did say that she took a college class, got college credits or a certificate or something in this video to become a gardening greenhouse manager. Now, she also said that she suffers from fibromyalgia and Epstein-Barr syndrome. Why would you take a class in a physical job that you can't physically do. Does that make sense? It doesn't to me, but she did. And then she was saying she's going to school three hours a day, then working in a florist three hours in the afternoon. If you can do all this 
three hours a day here, three hours a day there, plus I'm sure there's travel time in between. So you're looking at eight hours a day that you're out, up and down, in and out, out with the public. Why doesn't she just return to work, period? I don't understand why people feel that you're receiving Social Security disability, this is where you want to stay. Why would you want to stay there? If there's a way for you to get back into the workforce, why wouldn't you? Like I said in the beginning of this segment, Social Security disability is not a king's ransom. Believe me, if you're on it, you know it. You're never going to get rich. You're just going to survive. You're just going to be in that box, and that's where you're going to survive. Now, on the flip side of that, you have to be thankful for what you are receiving from Social Security disability, especially if you're physically disabled. If you're physically disabled and you can't work, then you can't work, period. But if you're, if you're suffering from something like, say, depression, depression is easily managed, and I'm not, I'm not trivializing it, but depression can be managed with medication that can get you back into the workforce. So what I'm trying to get at here is if you need social security disability, then by God, thank God it's there. But if you can find your way back into the workforce, why would you not want to? That's my question. And Colleen, what I'm trying to say to you is if you can work, by all means work. And there's all kinds of ways that you can work with social security to get back to work full time. But what it seems like this woman in your video there she wanted to keep Social Security and keep a full-time pay. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Social Security is not a lottery payment. It's not a windfall. The same as a judgment in court is not meant to be a windfall. It's not meant to be a lottery payment. You know, Social Security is trying to put you back as close to whole as you were financially before you got hurt. A judgment in a lawsuit trying to make you whole, just like you were bef before you filed the lawsuit. It's not meant to be a way to make a living. It's not meant to be a way to get rich. And unfortunately, some people look at it like that. Some people look at people on Social Security and think we're lazy. No, we're not lazy. We have a problem. We have a physical problem or a mental problem for that matter, but we're not lazy. But then you always have that one group, that one group that sneaks in to the, to the majority, and they are. And that's what this lady in this video reminded me of, to be honest with you. And again, I'm not calling her a liar, but that's what she reminded me of. She, she reminded me of somebody that just wants to keep taking and taking and taking and thought she was playing the government off. Like, uh, well, I called them. Well, I don't remember their name, but I called them. I called them. Here's my suggestion to everybody. If you have anything to do that you have to communicate with Social Security Disability, you can call them, but follow up every call with a letter to that person, confirming your phone call. You, same thing with the IRS. If you have a conversation with someone from the IRS, always follow up with a letter. It makes sense. It, it's for your protection. I know somebody, very dear friend of mine years ago, he was a truck driver, and he got sick working for a water company, and his lungs, he got a lung disease, and he found out while he was, while he was home on disability, he says, I can't do this anymore. Jimmy, I can't do it. And he decided he was going back to work. Now, he wrote a letter to Social Security Disability asking what the steps were he had to do to go back to work, and they answered him. And he filled out all the paperwork. He kept copies of everything he sent. And he knew he was going to receive his Social Security disability for a certain amount of months. And after that, it would be cut off and he'd be back working. So he was all happy with that. And he went back to work. He went to work for, as a truck driver again. And about a year and a half goes by. And he comes to me and says, look at this. He's got a letter. Social Security is charging him. Okay. So the Department of Social Security is charging him with fraud. And... Now they want, I don't know how much in back money and fines, and he could go to jail. Well, he had to go to court. He went to court. He brought all his paperwork with him, and they threw it out. He had proof that he told them, and he was smart because they had told him in the beginning, I think it was eight or nine months, he was going to get his checks for eight or nine months, and after that, the checks were going to stop. Well, after the, that, 
that time period, they kept on sending him checks. He called them up from the road, and they said, well, if you got it, it's yours. Well, he took those checks, and he put them on the side in a separate account. And when it came time, and they came after him, they turned around and said, you owe us because you received uh, $12,000 in extra in extra payments, and you have to pay that back. And you're going to have to pay it back with interest over time. He said, no, I don't. So he, he went. He got a cashier's check, went to Social Security at the hearing that day, handed him back that check. And he, he said, I never spent them. He says, I put it in the bank. Been in this bank for, for ever since my last check came in that I was owed. So whatever you do, you ever hear that, that saying, cub your ass, CYA, cub your ass? Make sure you cover your ass. Everything in writing. So back to you, Colleen. Yes, you can earn money while you're receiving Social Security disability. What I suggest you do, if that's what you want to do, make an appointment, speak to a counselor at, at Social Security, and explain to them what you want, and they'll explain what's available to you. They may even help you get back into the workforce, Colleen, and I think that would be a great thing if you possibly can. I know too many people that can't sit for too long or can't stand, can't pick up more than five pounds. They're blind, they're crippled, they can't ever they can't return to the workforce. But somebody that has some of these other diseases, I know that uh, asthma can be a reason to collect social security disability. If that can get under control, then you can go back to work. There's certain types of work you can't do, certain types of work you can. Sit down and talk with social security disability. They're not your enemy. They're not looking to put you out in the street and take you off the off their rolls. They're looking to help. And too many people look at Social Security disability as the enemy. Oh, I'm afraid they're watching me. Oh, I'm afraid that they're going to take my, my payments away. The people that are always afraid that Social Security is watching them knows, I think, that they're doing something wrong. That's just my opinion. All right, Colleen, thank you very much for writing in. Thank you for listening to An Apple A Day, and please continue to listen. Well, I want to thank you all for stopping by today, and... We have a full week next week. We got a lot of things going on. Like I said, we're going to cover the journaling next week, plus a lot more. And we're probably going to publish a day early because big news, my new studio has been built and we're going to be moving into the new studio and my new house within the next two weeks. Over, I should say over the next two weeks. So not next week, but the week after, you'll be hearing from the new studio. That's going to be exciting. So please come back next week. Check Monday for new episodes. And remember this. Things can always be worse. No matter what, someone somewhere wishes they were in your position. So my friends, thank you. Have a great weekend. Dress for the weather. It's getting a little bit chilly out there. And I'll talk to you next week. You've been listening to An Apple A Day. And my name is Jimmy Apple. Thanks for listening to An Apple A Day with Jimmy Apple. Your gateway to a happy, healthy life. Join our community at www.famousapple.com. See you next time.